Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo. I've got another video for you guys. So today, we are going to be talking about my all-time favorite X-Men, Robert Bobby Drake. We have Bobby Drake Iceman, and he is on the slate today. We're going to be talking about who should play this character when the MCU finally gets their X-Men. I have concocted a list for you guys of my top five picks and then a few bonus so make sure to stay towards the end to see um, some of the odder choices that I picked to play Bobby Drake. So first let me tell you what I'm looking for in Iceman, in Bobby Drake, okay? So whoever's gonna play Iceman needs to capture the struggle that Bobby Drake had when he developed his mutation, his family rejected him. So he was among a group of others who their families had sub had submitted them to Xavier to the Institute or Xavier came to them seeking for them to send their kids to Professor X. But how Professor X found Iceman on his radar was that Iceman had actually, uh, there was a mob out to get him and he, which was instituted by his family. And so he was about to be torn apart and the X-Men had to intervene. So Professor X had to come and shut the whole riot down um, with his powers. And so part of what makes Bobby unique and special on the team is that he's always been kind of a troublemaker. He's always ran his mouth. He's very much like Spider-Man in that he's constantly um, joking around and offending people, but he, he isn't bad intended, but he's not the most well-intended, motivated person on the team either. He's actually on the team for one very specific reason. They are his family. And so he does. He feels like he isn't somebody that uh, maybe feels as strongly about the cause as say Professor X or Cyclops, but he believes in it enough that he participates wholeheartedly and of his own accord, but also he's, he's found the only family that he has on the earth in the X-Men. And even though he is tough to be around, he's kind of like the annoying little brother. Um, which I can personally relate to. He is, um, he he feels that special connection. And so this, whoever's gonna play Iceman has to have um, some degree of a dramatic ability. Doesn't have to be over the top, but has to have something that, something like how Sean Ashmore played the emotional side of Iceman much more than he played the comedic or humorous side. But they also have to have that that comedy, they have to have that sense of humor, that natural comedic timing. They've gotta be able to uh, hit both ends of that much more into the comedy realm, but there has to be the ability to convey that level of dependency, emotional dependency on the team. Even though he doesn't show it very often, um, there will come a time in my TV show where he is going to have to express um, that kind of true emotion. When it finally gets down to it, he has to be able to express his devotion to the cause, but also the fact that he stands with the X-Men because they stood with him and they were the ones that rescued him and they're the ones that protected him and sheltered him from his own biological family and the riot that was ensued because of his mutation. So um, that's a little bit long-winded, but now we can get into it. Let's jump straight in. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over here. Perfect, so I've got up here on my page, you guys can see um, that I have all of this information for Iceman, it has a quick description down here. Um, it shows that, you know, we're talking about cold and ice manipulation. We already know who he is. Let's jump in. First pick of the day is, and this might sound a little crazy to some people, but I think if you've seen his body of work, you already know where I'm going with this. Dave Franco, okay? So you might be thinking Dave Franco, you know, he's, he's a very specific um, actor. He has, you know, a very specific persona. Um, he might, you know, he gets typecast a lot, but that's not a bad thing. In this case, the type of role that he typically plays is exactly what I'm looking for. A hint of emotion, really silly, doesn't take a lot super serious, and, you know, he he, he can question authority and, you know, he, he plays by his own rules. This is the guy. So even though he's 33 years old, so it seems like he's pretty old, um, if you've seen him in any of his... his uh, uh, working films or, or anything he's been in, he always is able to su very successfully play a much younger man. Typically he plays like coming out of high school, college age, beginning of college, even though he's 33 years old, 
Um, he has that look, a boyish charm, a higher tone in his voice, and he's got amazing comedic skills. And the fact that this guy, look down here, is five foot seven would make him stand dramatically lower than the picks that I had for Cyclops, the, a lot of the picks that I had for Beast, some of the characters that de depend more on that stature, on that frame and size. Um, this would provide a great visual contrast for some of the team shots where you see everybody maybe side by side or in the same frame. Um, this could provide a lot of dynamic because he is shorter. And I, I am looking for them to be a little bit on the shorter side, not specifically short, but shorter than my picks for Cyclops and Beast, hopefully. And so I think Dave Franco, if we're going to go with an older actor, he can still play a much younger individual. So um, yeah, that's my first pick. Let's take a look. Um, I have some fan casting up here. Um, I just simply Googled it. So you guys can find this as well on a quick Google search of Dave Franco Iceman fan cast. But you can see people are doing visual comparisons side by sides. He has that look, a very chiseled jaw. Um, you could easily do the hair up and go for that spiky Iceman look. Um, right here, you know, you can see that somebody's already doing comparisons for this one. There's a lot of options out here on the table, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead. You guys can already see what I'm looking for here. Um, so let me go ahead and show you guys my next pick. So before I continue on, um, recap, Dave Franco is five foot seven and 33 years old, which um, is I think the second oldest person on my list. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. Next up is Robbie Amell. So some of you guys may or may not be rolling your eyes on this one. I don't care because he is hilarious. This guy is great. Um, if you've seen him in something like The Tomorrow People, that's not his best work. But what I will say is that his work on, say, The Flash and in CW has him playing a much more serious role, um, which is not where I'm going with this, but he is capable of dramatic acting. And that is one thing that I think is important to have, but it's not the critical factor for my Iceman. What I am looking at is if you guys haven't seen a little film on Netflix called When We First Met, um, he is hilarious. He does such a good job. If you guys have seen him on How I Met Your Mother, he had a, a, an episode or two where he was on that as well. Very funny. This guy is great at comedy. And if you've seen any of his non um, film or TV work, like say his YouTube or his uh, social media, this guy is a bag of laughs. This guy is constantly riffing back and forth. Specifically, if you've seen the videos of him and Stephen Amell, he's hilarious. He's he's a uh, fantastic actor, uh, but he's um, he's a fantastic personality and he is the same, the same type of character, the same type of person that I'm looking for for my Iceman. So he's 30 years old, a little bit younger than my previous pick, Dave Franco, but he's also 5 foot 11. Makes him a little bit on the taller side. He's encroaching upon 6 foot, but compared him to my other casting choices for Cyclops and Beast, that's not that tall. And that would still be a, a sharp contrast with my other picks for the other characters. Now, looking over um, for, for me on my, on my notes, he is also, um, he's also uh, 30 years old. So uh, that makes him, you know, a few years younger. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of these. Not a lot of fan castings for Iceman. Most people out here are showing him as Superboy. They seem to want him for that. Um, but I think it would be a huge waste of talent to put him in a role like Superboy, where, I mean, he is, he is fit, he is talented. I like this one though, Terry McGinnis right here. Um, the uh, Batman Beyond fan cast. That's kind of cool. A little again on the serious side, but at least he, at least Terry McGinnis is is snarky. I think uh, it would be much better to get him into a comedy role where he can he can really thrive, and um, you know show that youthful spirit that he has. I think that would be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and and cut that off right there. You guys have seen enough of him. I'm gonna go to the next guy. Okay, so the next one on my list. This one. Uh, some of you guys are gonna get really excited about this, but um, this one was fun for me, and I'll tell you why right now. So next up, Drake Bell. So if you guys have ever seen Drake and Josh, um, that was one of my favorite shows growing up. Uh, it was it was probably the best show ever to hit Nickelodeon, honestly. 
and uh, he's 32 years old. This guy is really funny. If, you, if you've seen that show at all, you already know he's hilarious. But if you don't know that he's already, he's a nerd as well, and he plays a very similar role in, uh, in a vocal role, he played Spider-Man. It doesn't show here. Superhero movie was hilarious. The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, all hilarious. But right now, he uh, uh, a couple years ago, he was doing the Spider-Man, uh, the Spider-Man animated series, and the Spider-Man animated series, um, not from the '90s, but let me see if I can find this one. I'm gonna go ahead and just jump in right here. Um, a lot of people are. Let's see, Drake, Bell, Spider-Man. So a lot of people were fan casting him to play Spider-Man, and the reason being was because he voiced him in Ultimate Spider-Man. So if you've seen that series, it's wonderful. It's one of the best animated Spider-Man series out there, and every single one of them is great. Um, but among them, his vocal acting as Spider-Man is perfection. It's literally become... Um, my new standard for Peter Parker um, as far as you know like what I expect from the humor level and the the tone and the voice and um, he's got it all he's still very young very youthful um, and I think that it would be really great to get him in a role that is very close to that very similar and Spider-Man once had uh, a TV show called Spider-Man and Friends and one of the, the other two characters that was on that show other than Spider-Man was Iceman. He was one of the buddies of Spider-Man and the reason being was because they're very similar. They're very uh, close in, in the way that the characters were written except for Spider-Man is morally motivated and Iceman is loyalty motivated. And so I think it would be really good to get Drake Bell in there. So there's not a lot of fan casting uh, images for, for Drake Bell, but he kind of fits that bill a little a little bit slender fit but not ripped you know just like uh this image is pretty ripped though but uh the hair you know like he's got to have some swagger and i think that that's something that drake bell totally embodies so i'm gonna go ahead and recap his stats he is 5'9 putting him at the uh i think it's tied for the second shortest on the list which is great because it's a strong contrast with my other picks and then also uh, 27 years of age. Wait, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. 32 years of age. <laughs> Read the wrong line on my notes. So, And also 32 years of age. Next on the list, everyone is going to love this one. You guys have probably already seen it while I was scrolling. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump to the next one. Dylan O'Brien. So this one's really cool. Um, Dylan O'Brien is possibly the most perfect person for this role. Um, not 100% sure yet, but I know for a fact everybody wants this guy in the role. Um, if he can't play Spider-Man, he should definitely be playing Iceman. And here's some of the reasons why, okay? So lately he's been playing a lot of like characters um, that are very serious. Maze Runner, uh, American Assassin, um, either Maze Runner all the, in the whole series. He's very serious. Um, some quips from time to time, but not really. It's not a comedy. You know what I mean? And so 27 years old, he's very young. Um, I believe he is the second youngest person on my list. And uh, also being five foot 10, uh, one of the shortest, not the shortest, but he's, he's in that realm. He's very close to one of the shorter picks on the list. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. Let me just jump to the next one. I think you guys are going to see a lot, a lot more in the direction here. A lot of people have fan casted him to play this role. Um, let me go ahead and go find another one for you guys. Let's see, Dylan O'Brien here. He's got that like sharp, sharp nose features. He looks very much like the cast uh, or the image here. Um, it could have been inspired. There's a lot of art on this on this page. Um, I wanted to find for you guys some good ones, but you guys get the gist of that. Most people have him fan cast as Spider-Man. And that's great, actually. I think he would be a wonderful Spider-Man um, because he is hilarious. If you guys haven't, if you guys seen some of his behind the scenes work or anything that he's done, some comedy in, some short sketches or whatnot, um, social media, he's really funny. This guy is hilarious. And it would be, a, again, a shame 
to just get him uh, in, into purely serious roles, I, I would love to see him expand upon his comedic range and go for Iceman. Uh, go for broke with Iceman. That would be great. So that, again, probably the best, most perfect, accurate um, pick we could get because of his excellence in both drama and also in comedy. His his look is just absolutely perfect for it. Height is right in the pocket of where we want him to be. Um, and he's an A-list actor at this point. Um, 5'10", 27 years old. Uh, I think he would be great for the role. And so, um, and so do most people. So let's go ahead and jump to the next one. This one is very out of the box, but this was this is my number five pick, and I'm gonna let you guys know exactly why. It's um, it kind of ties back to another film I referenced earlier. But hear me out on this one, okay? This is a this is my pick. A little odd. Bear with me. Adam Devine, and I know what you're thinking, um, dude. No way. He was the fat kid in, <laughs> in Pitch Perfect. Uh, the frat boy. Yes, he was. Uh, he was also in Workaholics where he was overweight, but he has since lost the weight. And so I think that's important because somebody that is not particularly um, like lean looking that played the role is Sean Ashmore in the X-Men series with Brian Singer. Now, I know he is fit, but he doesn't look as lean as some, some of the picks that I have like Dylan O'Brien. And so I wanted to... Um, I wanted to show you guys kind of like what my thoughts are. Now, again, this one is an uphill battle because he is 35 years old and that is the oldest member of my list, okay? So he is he is the eldest, which would make it a much more difficult uh, casting choice, especially, you know, depending on where uh, the, the choices line up between, you know, Professor X and Beast and Cyclops and how old the whole team is. He needs to be younger than most of these guys, or at least behave younger. And I think that's where this is going to start to flip back into his side, is that he is very youthful. And what I mean by that is he embodies youth. He is hilarious. He's got kind of like this childlike innocence to his, his um, uh, I don't know, his vibe. Like, if you guys have seen him in Workaholics, Pitch Perfect, he's very... Like he plays an immature person very well. And I think immature is the word that I'm looking for for ice for Iceman is that, you know, he's got great power. Um, he's got amazing control over his abilities, but he's highly immature. He pisses people off and, you know, he stays close to the X-Men because they're like, the, they're literally the only group that has accepted and stayed with him. So he is loyal to them as well. And so I think he would be able to capture that very nicely. Let me go ahead and show you guys some of these picks. Now they're literally, I, I could not find a single fan cast um, image, you know, side by side comparison for Adam De De uh, Devine. But I wanted to show you guys some of the images just to help you get over the fat, <laughs> the fat image of Adam Devine. He's not, he's not fat anymore. I mean, if you look at like, like say this one, that's not fat. That's actually kind of buff. That's like, that'd be like one of the buffer dudes on your high school football team, basically. And so then you see him here next to one of the fittest dudes on the planet, Zach Efron. Um, yep, he's ripped. And so if you, if you go here, you can see he's lost a ton of weight. And uh, I think he's looking pretty good right here. So he would be, he would be great for Iceman. I believe as an actor, he would fit the bill. Um, looks wise... I think his his face has really soft features and Iceman typically has sharper features. So that I think is a little bit of a turnoff for me, but I still think that his acting ability um, and his looks, his looks are close enough and his acting ability is absolutely right where it needs to be. Um, he, he has played roles, especially in, a, in that little film I mentioned earlier called um, When We First Met with Robbie Amell on Netflix. Check that out. It's kind of a chick flick. It's outside of my typical range of like what I typically watch, but I have a wife too. And she made me watch that. And I actually really enjoyed it. I loved it. And it was because Adam Devine and Robbie Amell did such a great job, both of them in their roles, uh, respectively. And both of them showed incredible range between, uh, you know, dramatic acting and comedy. And just, they were fantastic together. I loved it. So I pick, I pick him for my fifth spot. So that 
right there. Uh, he is 5'8", 35 years old. He is uh, tied for the shortest person on my list, which would provide the greatest contrast between Beast and Cyclops and the rest of the team. And then he's got a youthful face. He behaves very immature when he needs to, but he also has great dramatic capability as an actor. And I think that he would be, he would be fantastic in the role. Um, okay, so that's the final, that's number five. So that's my top five right there, casting choices for Iceman. A little bit outside the box, this one, but um, it matters a lot to me because Iceman is my favorite character, always has been. Um, I've always loved and connected very much with that character and the struggles that he represented in the story. And I would love to see somebody on this list play that character. Um, and I've got some that are more favored than others, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the bonus choices, okay? So the bonus choices for my picks for Cy uh, for uh, Iceman are first up, Cody Christensen. So this picture sucks, all right? So don't even look at that face, forget that face. That's not a good picture at all. It doesn't even look like him. 30, 23 years of age puts him at the youngest spot on my list. And uh, then also he's 5'8", tied for the shortest, again with Adam Devine, or Devine. And so he typically, he plays more dramatic stuff like in Pretty Little Liars, All-American Teen Wolf, but he has some joking around as well. And if you've seen, again, the behind the scenes or social media with this guy, I'm gonna just jump ahead to the next picture because that doesn't even look like him. So this is more or less what he looks like. Okay, this right here looks a heck of a lot like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back and forth. Look at that. So this, this face, chiseled jaw, you know, like he's got sharper features, sharper nose feature. Check this out. So this is him on Teen Wolf or whatever. So he's really, he's really silly off of camera, very immature. I think that's what we need for an Iceman. So again, he's not on my top five list, but I thought it would be really interesting to show somebody like this, um, who looks the part, who's the, the right height, very young. I didn't have a lot of younger actors on my list. Most of them were between the age of you know, 27 up to 35, which is pretty old for someone who's supposed to play the youngest member of the team. So I wanted to add this guy on there as a bonus. Um, his resume doesn't really speak too much for comedy, but his personality and his social media certainly do. And so I would like to see him uh, play Iceman in the X-Men if my top five can't make it. So uh, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can find Yeah, I know it's just coming up more as Dylan O'Brien and stuff. Which is great. I think this is him here. Is that him? Is that the same guy? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay. Next up, I'm going to jump through the last one. The last one is outside the box a little bit again. Most of this list is. I, I feel like I'm reaching a little bit because I'm having to make certain compromises with my decisions um, back and forth. And then eventually I'll land on something that I think is absolutely perfect. Kind of close to my Dylan O'Brien pick or my Robbie Amell pick. Um, so let me, let me go ahead and jump ahead. The next on my list is Colton Haynes and he has been on CW's arrow. Um, he's been on teen wolf as well. San Andreas, um, with Dwayne, the rock Johnson. He's played tons of serious roles. Um, he is, he was a model first, if I'm not mistaken. And then he became an actor. Um, and he is, uh, you know, very talented. Um, but I think he gets, a lot more attention for his dramatic acting than he does for his comedic acting. His, again, social media, behind the scenes, he's a jokester. He likes to joke around, he likes to be silly, funny. Um, and this guy would play Iceman uh, very well, I believe. Now, he's 30 years old, but he looks very young, and he can play a younger individual like he did on Arrow. Um, he's five foot nine, which is the, tied for the second shortest on the list. And um, I think that he would be really great. There's some fan art as well. People have been comparing him. Now he has a really sharp jawline as well, sharper features. 
um, the icy blue eyes. People have been doing some art here. There's a bunch of different picks on this list, but you can see Colton Haynes is in this one as well. Um, you know, here's one of Dave Franco. Um, you know, there, a lot of people have been looking at this guy for this role. And I think that it would be uh, a really good choice. Now, again, not my first five picks, not even my first of the bonus picks. But I do think that if given the chance, he looks the part enough and he has shown behavior, not really so much in his resume, but off, you know, off of his resume on his social media, he's shown that he has that capability. I would like to see him, ex you know, expand a little bit more into uh, the realm of, you know, comedy, comedic acting. And, uh, you know, then when, when need be, he could be very serious as well. Um, so, and again, my storyline would also very sharp, very closely follow Iceman uh, as he fails his initial test to join the team. So, and then you could deal with his emotions there and then build him back into the team as you go. So I think that would be really good. Um, and, you know, he's, he's totally got the look for it. Uh, he's got the hair for it. I think he would be a good pick, especially aesthetically, but also I think that he has the potential to be good in the role. So those are my picks. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back here to my other screen. Thank you guys. Um, I had a lot of fun with making this list. It was very difficult for me because I'm, I'm really hard on my choices for this, this acting role specifically. Iceman means a lot to me. My fa Again, my favorite X-Men. And I think that he hasn't been done right yet. Sean Ashmore did a good job, but I feel like the way that the character was written, much like the way that uh, Cyclops was written in the Brian Singer X-Men universe, it just didn't, it didn't grab who the character really is. Um, it, it found a couple of elements that they wanted in contrast with the rest of what the movie was doing. And um, it just, it felt like the character did not represent what it was in the books. You know what I mean? And, or in even, you know, in any of the iterations we had seen previously. Very, very serious. And I think it would be, um, it would be sad to not have a very, a very funny and, you know, sharp, younger Iceman. <laughs> and I say that having picked most of my list in their 30s. But again, I picked people who look and behave and act in younger roles all the time. Um, that they act, you know, as teenagers or early 20s all the time. And that's what their resume is. Especially these Teen Wolf guys, Drake Bell. Um, you know, we talk about Dave Franco. Um, even, even Dylan O'Brien doesn't usually play 27, usually. He's typically playing much younger. Um, so... That's, those are my thoughts. I want to hear from you guys. I want you guys to tell me down in the comments below if you guys agreed with my picks for Iceman. Um, what did you guys think? Which one on my list is your favorite? Again, to recap, we've got Dave Franco at 5'7", 30, uh, uh, 33 years of age. Second up, Robbie Amell, 5'11". He's also 30 years of age. Third on the list is Drake Bell. Drake Bell is 5'9", 32 years of age. Number four is Dylan O'Brien. Dylan O'Brien is five foot 10, 27 years of age. Number five is Adam Devine. Adam Devine is five foot eight, 35 years of age. And then the last two bonus picks are Cody Christian, uh, who is five foot eight and 23 years of age. And the last person on my bonus list is Colton Haynes, five foot nine, 30 years of age. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this casting. Let me know um, which of these you think lines up best with your favorite picks from my other castings. This is going to wrap up the first five X-Men. But again, I'm going to have two more videos for you guys in this series. So stay tuned for that. And then I'll probably end up doing a total re uh, recap where I pull my draft pick from all of these different lists at the very end. So I've got two more characters I'm going to fan cast for you. Stay tuned for that. Make sure to turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. And also, if you're not already, please subscribe. I'm making videos here every single week for you guys. I'm looking forward to making a lot more in 2019 for you guys. Um, I've upped my production value so that I can do things like add the green screen here. 
Um, I really appreciate you guys and everything that you guys uh, do for me with likes and clicks and comments. Um, please comment down below. I cannot wait to hear from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, if you like it, like it and share it with a friend. Thank you guys. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legends.